with uh, some colleagues from uh, ODI, from the International Economic Development Group, we had the opportunity to produce some papers concerning uh, economic analysis, quantitative analysis of energy efficiency. In particular, I will, uh, I will uh, speak very quickly about four contributions that we had opportunity, four contributions that we had the opportunity to do. Uh, one, the composition analysis of the energy intensity movements uh, over time. Uh, an econometric analysis about uh, the relationship between energy intensity and profitability. An econometric analysis about energy intensity and productivity. And uh, an econometric analysis about the barriers to the adoption of energy efficiency. On the, compon on the, the composition analysis uh, um, uh, that Ludo had not the time to talk about, uh, basically, we try to investigate what are the determinants of the energy intensity movements. And basically, as uh, Andrew was saying before, there are two main components of the energy intensity movements. The structural change, when countries start moving uh, orient their economies towards, for example, green, uh, green sectors, or technical efficiency. So when countries are able to reduce the content of energy consumption per unit of output. Well, an interesting uh, finding coming from uh, decomposition analysis is a technique by which you can uh, verify to what extent energy intensity movements come from the technical efficiency effect or the structural change effect. Uh, an interesting result that we found is that, as, you, as Ludovico said, that there is a, a, a decreasing trend of energy intensity of, uh, for many countries. But whereas for low-income countries, developing countries, the technical effect is the predominant driver of the energy intensity reduction, for uh, high-income uh, countries, the structural effect, so the <coughs> orientation of the economy towards uh, uh, green sectors, is the predominant component in order to decrease uh, energy intensity. There is a well-known uh, hypothesis, policy hypothesis in the literature, uh, whose name is Environmental Kuznets Curve. Uh, many scholars try to investigate if there is a bell-shaped relationship between an economic indicator and the environmental indicators. The policy relevance of this hypothesis uh, it derives from the fact that if uh, there is a bell-shaped relationship, if there is a turning point in relationship between an economic indi indicator and environmental indicator, it means that exists a threshold beyond which uh, uh, there, there are in the growth process, in the development process, beyond which uh, the environment, an environmental indicator, starts improving. Well, the, uh, our results from uh, the composition analysis uh, suggest that uh, probably we are towards the downward side of the environmental cuisine school because uh, we have a decreasing trend of energy intensity. Uh, in the upward portion of this curve, probably there are developing countries. And uh, in the, for the European countries, the technical efficiency is uh, predominant if compared to structural change. In the, uh, the other portion of the downward uh, section of the environmental Kuznets score, probably we find, we find the high income countries for which structural change is dominating the technical intensity effect. Second contribution, we try to answer the following question. What is uh, the relationship be between energy intensity and profitability? We had the opportunity to work with uh, a World Bank uh, survey, including uh, more, uh, more or less uh, 25,000 observations, so very huge data set. And we tried to investigate what are the, we calculated the profit profits of firms in uh, 29 de developing countries, and we're trying to investigate what are the determinants of profits for firms in developing countries. Well, interestingly, we find that uh, by our economic analysis that uh, in for, in, uh, for 29 developing countries, uh, there is uh, a negative relationship between energy intensity and profitability in 27 out of 29 developing countries and 14 out of 16 manufacturing sectors. So I'm not talking uh, yet about the statistical significance. I will come back uh, later. So the microeconomic analysis suggests that a lower energy intensity uh, uh, promotes uh, profitability profits. And this is translated at macroeconomic level in this relationship that you see about the GDP per capita and energy intensity. You see from this graph borrowed from World Energy, energy Council that uh, uh, countries with a higher level uh, of GDP per capita 
show the lower levels of energy intensity. So this finding, uh, which, is, which is visible at the macroeconomic level, probably is explained by our mi microeconomic analysis for films in developing countries by the statistical results that I presented before. Third contribution, we try to investigate the relationship between energy intensity and total factor productivity. Be careful, I'm not talking about energy productivity. I'm talking about the total factor productivity. So the productivity deriving from the use and combination of the whole set of inputs, not just energy productivity. At the first, uh, as a first experiment, we try to see if the total factor productivity, so the capacity of firms to uh, generate value added, uh, is an important factor explaining lower energy intensity level uh, at firms, together with other factors such as uh, firms characteristics, such, uh, such as age of the firm, such as foreign ownership, and so on. For technical details, uh, we can uh, maybe discuss later. Interestingly, we find that for 23, we are talking about a survey, a sample of uh, more or less 20,000 observations. For 23 out of 24 countries, we found a robust and uh, statistically significant uh, a negative relationship between total factor productivity and energy intensity. So the firms which are more uh, oriented towards technological change, firms which are more productive, are able to reduce the level of energy intensity. By working uh, uh, on, these, uh, uh, on these results, we also uh, we realize that uh, probably we are sure that there is not just a one-way relationship between total factor productivity and energy intensity. We realize that there is a reciprocal mm -hmm. relationship. So the most innovative firms uh, with, with the highest total factor productivity are able to um, reduce the level of energy intensity. At the same time, firms with lower energy intensity are able to promote total factor productivity, technological change in developing countries. What are the channels by which countries with lower energy intensity are able to improve total factor productivity? The Industrial uh, Developer Report explains some channels. For example, cleaner and more efficient technology can improve output quality. Enhanced competitiveness a first mover advantage. Energy efficiency typically requires higher skilled work and managers. Uh, less maintenance costs. Energy efficiency is often correlated to the lower use of other materials in the production process. If I use less water in my production process, I also need less energy in order to process the water, which is an input uh, in, the, in the production process. Um, we have three good messages. So we are in the downward portion <coughs> of the environmental budget curve. Energy intensity is decreasing. Energy intensity promotes uh, pro total factor productivity. Energy, uh, lower energy intensity uh, promotes uh, uh, profitability. Everything is all right. Do we need policy? The answer is yes. Why? Well, well a first um, a proof of this that uh, we need policies that in the regression expressing the relationship between energy efficiency and profitability, only in 13 out of 29 developing countries and 9 out of 16 manufacturing sectors coefficient are statistically significant. What we were, what Simon and uh, Ludovico were, dis uh, were discussing before. Why we don't find that energy efficient is only profitable? That's be quick. S yes, the situation is uh, in many cases complex. There is a time mismatch between energy efficiency investment and benefits of the project. Different uh, energy intensity investment are characteriz uh, characterized by different payback periods and rate of returns. Mm -hmm. Policy driven energy efficiency inter intervention may require payback periods for investment that are not consistent with market condition. Costs for energy efficiency are very different according to the specific technology. And of course, in our analysis, we, you may also have uh, some uh, measurement errors for the, with the data that you, are, uh, that you are using. And why also do we also need the policy? Why is it so important industrial development report on energy efficiency? Because uh, we are in a situation with many barriers to the adoption of energy efficiency in developing countries. We try to do an econometric analysis based on 40, 150 firms uh, uh, in Filipina, Vietnam, Moldova, and Thailand, a survey collected by uh, UNIDO, manufacturing firms, of course. Um, a question which was asked to those firms were, was, uh, are you available to invest in energy efficiency technology in the next five years? Yes, no. 
and we try to uh, uh, find which factors uh, affect uh, the firms the, sh the choices in order to invest in energy uh, efficiency. Just uh, um, a couple of results. Uh, we found that the microeconomic condition, possible production interruption, uh, top management commitment, lack of internal finance, are more important than macroeconomic con conditions to obtain energy efficiency. A good policy may be unuseful if uh, firms are not prepared to energy efficiency, but well-prepared firms may also invest in energy efficiency if there are not uh, appropriate policies. Firms, and uh, another important results, firms with experience in energy efficiency technology adoptions are more likely to adopt technological adoption in the future. Mm. If policy supports firms in the first adoption of energy efficiency, are more likely to invest uh, energy in energy efficiency in the future. In a nutshell, a lot of good news, uh, energy efficiency improves productivity, energy efficiency improves profitability, energy intensity is decreasing, uh, decreasing in, many, in many countries, but uh, policy will be crucial in order to promote uh, as much as possible energy efficiency in the future. And the Industrial Development Report, I think, it provides a unique and innovative, uh, and, uh, innovative contribution in this field. Very good. Thanks very much. I mean, of course, the question that arises out of that, which I won't ask you now, but I might later, is whether energy efficiency is the place to start, because actually what you're saying is good management, you know, has many different components, and maybe this is not the easiest entry point. So hold that question and come back.